Welcome one, welcome all. My name is Dan Diaz, and today I'm going to be your host as we look at the patch notes that were recently posted by Playwing. Now, before we go through this, I do just really quickly want to say that if you are on Discord, I do strongly recommend uh, following them on their main page. They post all their updates here. They post links to their uh, art competitions. There's just a lot of cool stuff to see and learn on their Discord, so I strongly recommend it. Or you can join my Discord. The link is below, and I post all their stuff there too. Yee! All right, let's get into this. Hello, Dragon Ears. Following the launch on PlayStation, we want to share an important update on the content you can expect to be added in Century throughout the next few weeks. Please consider the info that follows as a small peek into some of the future updates for Century rather than a set roadmap. Things often change depending on several factors, including feedback re received from the community. Also, we want to point out that we will also continue to improve the overall experience of Sentry on all platforms, so expect quality of life improvements, hotfixes, and such on top of these updates. And we'll continue to share updates on these incoming releases as we progress through the year. So the, understand that a lot of these changes are kind of freeform, and we don't know for sure exactly what order we're going to get them in, or if we're going to get them in the exact way that they're described here. So just remember that as we look to the future. They actually open up with some pretty exciting news right off the bat. Check this out. Last Team Standing makes its great return as the first event of Season 1 from Thursday the 6th to Sunday the 16th. It's only like three days away, you guys. Let's do this. In this limited time event, protect your wingmates and deal with your enemies until you're the only ones left in the skies. I remember when this game mode first came out, and although it is different from the other game modes, and so you will have to learn a little bit, it's so much fun. Y'all are gonna love it. In keeping with the season theme, games will only take place, place, typo, in the Valkyrian Sanctuary, and mission rewards will be Storm Razor items. Uh, keep in mind, if you do unlock something for the Storm Razor, but you have not unlocked the Storm Razor class itself, you can still get those items later when you unlock the Storm Razor, so don't fret about that. Uh, there will also be a leaderboard to reward those among you looking for a challenge. So if you play and you happen to be the best of the best of the best, kudos, you get extra goodies. Now, this was the big one. This is the big news. Fixes. This update will also bundle a range of fixes based on feedback received over the last few days, including optimizations for the crossplay and crash rates on PlayStation, as well as a fix that will prevent players on all platforms from being stuck at respawn under certain conditions. I got a lot of comments from y'all that once PlayStation launched, there were a few bugs that were exclusive to you guys including this. This happened to my brothers. I know it happened to at least a handful of people that were, that left me comments. It was it was annoying. It's annoying to get stuck on the respawn screen, not being able to come back in, and it really sucks when the game crashes right as the match is about to end or right before you finally join into a match. So, this optimization is very exciting and very welcome. Oh, but Dandy, I don't play on PlayStation. What does this update have for me? Yeah, yeah, hold your horses. We're about to get there. Halloween, Marauder Balances, and more fixes. Yeah, that's right, you whiny asshole. The spookiest season of all is almost upon us. Any fellow uh, Halloween fans out there? Please leave, leave your comments down below. I want I want I want a show of hands. I love Halloween. If you can't wait to carve a big pumpkin smile on your enemies with a slash of the Ripper Blade, then prepare for a proper trick or treat. And treat it is, because we will be giving Sentry one hell of a makeover with themed dragons, customizations, and other surprises. But we'll keep it hush hush for now on these. All right, all right. This. I am excited for this. We haven't really had much of a theme, like a holiday theme for Century. The closest we had was back in last winter. We had a version of the map that was given like a snow makeover, but that was about it. So seeing an event come out that's actually going to follow the, a holiday specifically, I'm excited to see what they do. I want to see a I want to see a jack o' lantern dragon, or at least a weapon that has something to do with you know Halloween or candy or something. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what they do. The Marauder Passive. We've been wanting to tweak the Marauder Passive for a long time, and we know you want this as well. Fear not, the rework is currently on the design table, and we aim to have it ready by the time this update comes out. Now, for those who didn't already know, the Marauder Passive 
is it's interesting basically the marauders abilities and powers all reset every time the marauder gets a kill or an assist kill so the whole point is that basically if you're using his powers wisely and you're managing to get at least close to one kill for each use of your abilities that this passive allows to recharge which allows him to create a domino effect with hunt I don't know, personally, I had no problem with the passive as it was, but I do also understand why some people would not care for that, especially with some other passives that are less active, that don't require you to do something perfectly. For instance, the Storm Razor's passive allows him to literally just negate a fireball or other projectile flying at him like once every few seconds or something. I forget the exact number of seconds. But the point is, you don't have to do anything for that. It's just automatic. It's a passive skill that automatically gives you benefits. So that may be the direction they're going with this because the Marauder passive was anything but passive. It required you to be very active. So I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what they do. And then fixes. Once again, this update will be packed with optimizations, including a fix for the rear view camera on PlayStation, as well as other fixes based on feedback we're receiving at the moment. So once again, great news for playstation players i actually did get a couple comments where people could not get the rear view camera to work by clicking down the right stick they're going to fix that they're going to be touching up on that creating some optimizations and making sure that everything works as smoothly for y'all on playstation as it has for the rest of us since the start now really good news for everybody check this out Considering players request to give PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 players enough time to reap the treasures of Season 1, as well as an exciting new piece of content to be introduced in Season 2 alongside the 5th class, yes you heard right, the 5th class, they're working on the next class right now, we have received, I was like, received, we have decided to extend Season 1 until at least the end of the year. Yup, at least the end of the year. Yeah, if y'all are behind, if y'all need to catch up on the season, or if you're just starting the season, you have at least until the end of December. My dudes, you're gonna be fine. Take to the skies, you'll get everything, no problem. We understand this extra time isn't ideal for those looking for fresh content, and that's why we're putting even more efforts on the PvE game mode. Ooh boy. Now, they had announced this on their Twitter page before, but this is the first time they've mentioned it here in the Discord, at least as far as I've seen, unless I missed something. It's the first time they've done it because it's the first time I've seen it. Leave me alone. Now, PvE, for those who don't know, PvE means player versus environment, or in other words, cooperative gameplay. So PvE game mode or cooperative game mode. Yes, we are still actively working on a highly requested PvE game mode and aim to introduce it first as a story driven temporary game mode that will be in the culminating event of season one, a shadow overscaled. This game mode will potentially become permanent depending on player reception. Now I have my own theory on what this is going to be. I actually think we're going to fight whatever it is that's sitting in the shadows at the end of the opening cinematic from a shadow over scaled. I mean, it fits the name, the shadow over scaled. At the end of the video, we see, oh no, a dragon shaped shadow standing over, um, scaled. I don't know if this is all big foreshadowing for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cancel me now. But yeah, I think that we're gonna end up fighting this thing. At least that's my theory. But whatever we end up doing, I think it's gonna be fun. And having a PVE cooperative game mode is going to be really good for new players who are trying to learn the game in a less stressful environment where they, where they don't wanna get pulverized by experienced players. Now, despite our previous announcement, the Gates of Fire event and Double XP have been pushed back to ensure we can meet expectations with the PvE game mode. We still plan to run these events at a later stage and our team is adapting Double XP to the new leveling system. So that part had to get pushed back a little bit to make room for other priorities, but they haven't let go of it. They're still working on it. And it says they're adapting Oops, adapting double XP to the new leveling system. I almost wonder if that means that that's gonna become like a permanent installation. I don't know, the wording on that one makes me curious, but I don't know for sure. All right, just a couple more, couple more notes to go over. Quality of life, ranked, new user interface, game more toggle, I think that's a typo, backfilling, rage systems, and more. 
Yeah, I see it down here. M I see it down here. Mode. That's supposed to be game mode toggle. Uh, in addition to all the tentpole content we plan to release in the coming months, we will keep a steady flow of quality of life improvements. Most of them are based on player feedback, but you can also expect other changes based on our observations to make the game experience better. Ranked. All right. The big ugly elephant in the room. To ensure rank stays a balanced and enjoyable experience for all players, whichever team configuration they prefer, our team has decided to work on two major changes. First, we are committing to improve the ranked matchmaking system with the goal to have it prioritize how players are matched based on their squad size. This is an issue for almost any game. If you have a squad, that means that you probably know those people, or at least you trust their skill well enough that you want to play with them. This means that in general, squads are gonna have overall higher skill and performance than solo players. For example, a squad of six players will be more likely to match with another squad of equivalent size. Then, depending on the effects of this change, we will consider a new queuing system to separate solo, duos, and three plus squads. And of course, two leaderboards. Now that part is interesting. Two leaderboards. So, yes, it's going to measure performance and skill, but it also acknowledges that there's going to be a different output metric depending on whether you're playing alone or the bunch of other tryhards who know what they're doing just as well as you oh and on top of that ranked icons will be reworked thank god because there are some icons that looked literally identical so this personally this may be silly but personally i'm actually very excited for this one little detail right here new user interface we've heard you loud and clear the current user interface doesn't fit the identity of century that's why we're completely reworking it and will soon immerse you in a much darker ambience or ambiance ambience ambiance that'll speak true to the dark fantasy fans out there now i didn't realize that this was an issue for some players until recently but yeah some people did not care for the fact that the user interface has a very sleek polished silvery like regal tone to it when a lot of the story and lore they're going for is much more dark fantasy so I guess they're gonna be changing the user interface to reflect that better. Cool, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. Game mode toggle. For months, lots of you expressed the will to be able to choose between different game modes in quick play. The reintroduction of this feature will come when we're confident it doesn't hinder the matchmaking experience. Now that we launched on PlayStation, we're at a point where we're considering bringing it back. This will require further observation over the next month, but if we manage to hit certain requirements, we will make this feature available again. Now, for those who weren't around back when this was a thing, there used to be a feature, it wasn't unranked, it was quick play. And when you hit it, it would randomly put you in one of a number of different game mode types. Imagine every match type in Arena and in Unranked all put together, and when you hit quick play, you could be put in any one of them and you didn't know. A lot of people liked that because it was kind of like a it was like a random slots machine. What game mode you're gonna play next? And it was actually a lot of fun. But matchmaking was eh, it was less than ideal. It was less than ideal, and they were still working on other things with matchmaking as well back then. So with the introduction of a whole new console's worth of players, as well as an improved matchmaking system, I'm excited to see if uh, quick play can make a solid resurgence. I think it'll be really, really good. All right, a feature that we've been asking for for a long, long time, backfilling. In the purpose of speeding up matchmaking and thwarting the negative effects of players leaving matches, we are working on the possibility to join ongoing matches under certain conditions. As it requires heavy work and an entire reconsideration of our systems, we cannot guarantee the outcome of this project yet, but we're exploring this as a possibility. Honestly, I'm just excited that they're looking at it. I don't know when it'll come into play, but any consideration I think is good news. Matchmaking time estimates. As part of our ongoing research to improve the overall experience of Century, our team is currently considering the possibility of matchmaking time estimates when players are waiting to join a game. Now this is a simple little quality of life addition. There are some games that do this. If it seems likely that you're going to have to wait like a minute and a half for a match, to have the game actually let you know that, that actually can be pretty useful. Now here's an interesting update notification I did not expect. The Rage Systems. 
Even though we're still in a very early phase to tell much about it, the rage system is nowadays considered by our team as something we have to rework. Therefore, we're looking at ways to improve it. Now, I don't, I don't know. I think this is interesting. I really didn't have a complaint about the rage system, but if they want to see about improving it, I, I don't know. I'm really curious to see what they're going to do about that. And there you have it. Those are all the big updates in this patch. If you've been reading this so far, we would like to thank you for your involvement in playing Sentry and helping us make the game better month after month. Don't forget, this is only the beginning, onwards and upwards. See you in the skies, Dragoneers. See you in the skies indeed. I'm excited to see these changes. I want to see what they're going to do for the Halloween event. I really want to see what they're planning to do for changing the Marauders passive, as well as these changes to the rage system. I just want to see all of it. And now that we have the game up on PlayStation, they had, for those who don't know, they put a bit of a pause on some of the updates because they wanted to catch up PlayStation players before they greenlit their other updates and changes. Now that y'all are here, the sky is the limit and we are diving into the new stuff, baby. So let's do it. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Thank you all so much for coming and listening to me read through these notes. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I love making content and I make new videos every week. I also stream every week. So there's a link down below to my Twitch channel. Please go consider go check it out. We have a lot of fun. We support charity. All in all, we pretend to be good people. And that's about all I have. So you all have a great day and I will see you in the skies above.